Well, somebody made a mess on the ground. Welcome back everyone. We are working on the Versatile 800 today. It is getting an oil cooler replacement slash reseal. The bigger thing is the reseal because it was leaking real bad. And I've known about that since we got the tractor, but it just started to get worse last year. And it, you know, it never overheated while we were plowing, which I fully expected it to, but it, it you know, it never did. Um, which I guess is nice. I'm not complaining. I was just, I'm surprised that it never did. Uh, it takes a lot more than a little overheating to kill these 855s anyway. But uh, yeah, it is getting an oil cooler reseal and replacement. I have all the parts here. I've already got the old cooler housing and everything off, as you can see. Removal is not difficult, It's but it does take some time and stuff is heavy. I advise that you pull the oil filter off first. You do what you want. Um, if you can find a way to drain the coolant, that would also be helpful because otherwise you're going to make a mess everywhere what i did was i because it's getting new coolant anyway what i did was i just went ahead and pulled everything apart up here and it made a mess and then to get the rest of it or the rest of most of it out of the block if that makes any sense i went ahead and pulled this pipe that goes down from here to the radiator so the pipe is right here as you can see little dirty I wanted to clean it up as well but what I did was um, I went down in there and I loosened the clamp on that hose and then I loosened the clamp up here and I worked this part off first and then I was able to come in here and just pop it out so if you are flushing the cooling system and you're dealing with a hot engine my advice is to put your bitch mittens on which are gloves if you're not familiar with the lingo and uh, I would get in here with a block of wood and a hammer, get this clamp loose, and just kind of tap on stuff till it comes loose, and then maybe get in here and do the same thing. But I, I would wear gloves if this is a hot engine, and you're probably going to get sprayed with hot water, so just be careful. Um, the manual says that on the oil cooler, well, okay, let me back up. On the, in the manual, it says there are two ways to drain the coolant from the Cummins engine block. The first is a petcock that's supposed to be on the back plate on the oil cooler, which... I assume your oil cooler's on the tractor. If it's not, you'll see what I mean in a minute by the back plate. But there's supposed to be a drain cock on there. Well, ours didn't have one. I think it just had a plug. Um, and I didn't read the manual before I started this project because why, why would you? That's, that's one way. Now, the second way, and I, you know, for the life of me, I do not know what they were talking about. But they said on, that's where the right side of the engine block. This is the left side of the engine block. And it said on the left side of the engine block, there is a plug at the water header as indicated. And I'm like, indicated where? Because that's not it, and that's not it. These are both for oil. Uh, these, I'm pretty sure, are for... Well, I want to say it's for like push rod inspection, but I, I'm not... That's not the right terminology, I, but I can't think of the right words at the moment. Um... So, I mean, there's that, and so I'm like, well, I'm looking around here. Okay, well, it's not that, because that's got to be for oil, because everything from, like, well, from, like, here on down should be oil. These are where your cylinder liners are at. That should be water going around there, your water jackets. But, so I'm, you know, looking, and I'm like, well, it's none of this, because this is for oil and fuel and hydraulic and all that and then you get back in there and you're looking at the water pump and stuff and you're like well there ain't no way to get in there and drain coolant not that i can see and it sure as hell ain't easy to get to and you know if you crawl underneath here and you look up there's a little petcock at the bottom of the radiator but how, how are you supposed to drain coolant i mean it's gonna be a month of sundays drain coolant out of that little thing i mean this whole tractor holds like 95 quarts so i I don't know where you're supposed to actually drain the coolant. If anyone does know, if you're familiar with these old 855s, and I do mean old 855s because it's it's right here, N855C250. There's no turbocharger on this. It's it's flipping old, okay? It's It's gotten up in years. It's not ancient. It's just, it's old. The point is, I don't know where to drain the coolant. So if you are more familiar with these old engines these old Cummins, then let me know and put it in the comments so that everybody else knows uh, because I could not find it. And I don't have time to waste and the engine's cold. Now it's going to be real interesting when I go to flush this when we're all done 
because that's it's going to be nice and hot and everything and i may not let it get up to operating temperature but um anyway i digress i'm getting off track uh, all right so here we have the oil cooler and the back plate in all of their respective glory of course this is where your oil filter spins on it's a b96 that's the baldwin number and you can use that to cross to something else if you want if you want but yeah this is the oil cooler so it's a cast iron housing and the cooler core sits inside my understanding is that it's retained by a couple of rings i don't know how exactly if they're like pressed on there if they're snap rings i'm gonna find out shortly because i gotta get that out of there but it should be retaining rings and then there should be two o-rings or maybe not two but there should be o-rings that seal the cooling core and so my understanding just looking at it if i'm correct the way that this works um this bolts up to the front of the engine okay here's your backing plate it's going to go back here and my understanding is that coolant is pushed through these tubes right it's pushed through these tubes and then it goes at the at the back it goes back into the engine block, which it's going to come out. And then this is the piece that was actually leaking on this. This O-ring just got super duper dry and finally gave up. But it comes to this backing plate and it goes into this O-ring back into the engine block. That's how it circulates. And everything really tapers down, which is what gives you your coolant pressure, your water pressure, which isn't much. It doesn't have to be much, but your cooling system, especially when it's hot, is under pressure, if you didn't know that. And uh, then your oil comes in through these galleys and circulates around okay and then it goes into the backing plate and back into the engine block and when i get the core out of here and we see the new one you'll you'll really see what i mean when i say it the oil spins around in here like so i mean it goes through your filter and then all that but that's my understanding of how this works i could be wrong and if i am please do correct me because i don't want anybody to have false information now, looking at the core here, it's not as filthy as I expected. I started chipping this off because I thought it was just like sludge. It is a hardened deposit. And so I would imagine the rest of these are also hard deposits too. This core, I don't think is shot. I think the core is actually in good shape. But I went ahead and got another one because my theory was that, well, one, if this one is actually bad, well, then we got a new one. And the second thing is, if it's not bad, but I screw it up getting it out of here, then we've got another one on standby. And we will go over parts and part numbers here shortly, because if I'm wrong and stuff is just a little bit off, this video is going to be very, very short. So, this is what your oil cooler core and housing looks like. Now, a couple more things. This is heavy. All right. It's quite heavy, and it's going to be dripping with coolant and oil when you pull it off. So just be prepared to get dirty. You know, you can go take a shower. If you get a little oil and antifreeze on you, it's not the end of the world. I mean, crime and eat. People have had worse put on them and lived. So there is that. Now, second thing, we will not be putting green coolant back in this. I am almost certain. The only, the only way I can visualize is putting green coolant back in this is if it's an emergency. And But I, I don't think so. We're going to get a barrel of extended life coolant. And we're going to put that in here because everyone is switching to extended life coolant. Uh, nobody really uses green anymore. N no one manufactures equipment and then recommends green right out of the gate. Your extended life is going to do all the things that your regular old green ethylene glycol is going to do. It's just that the extended life doesn't cause electrolysis quite so bad. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but this tractor is equipped with a coolant filter, a coolant chromate filter, and that is your part number, a BW5071. And I've got a new one of these that I will put on when I'm done flushing the system, just to get the rest of the green out, because we don't want to mix that with the new stuff. Uh, but this filter right here, yes, it filters debris and sediment, but it also, I mean, I don't know exactly how it works, but basically it conditions the coolant so that it doesn't, uh, what's the correct tense of electrolysis it, it prevents that it's got stuff in here that uh, helps prevent that in addition to just filtering your regular debris and your coolant system so what we're going to do here is when this is all done 
I'll fill it with water, run it, get it up to operating temperature, make sure it's not going to leak. And then, uh, and then, you know, when everything's said and done, we'll drain the water out and we'll put good extended life coolant in and we shouldn't have any more problems with this. Okay. Old core is clear to be removed and it's not in too bad of a shape. I did screw it up a little bit where I was trying to get it out. Let's just remember that this is the front side, whatever. Cummins. Long Canada. So this is an authentic Cummins cooler core. And like I said, it's not in bad shape. We weren't having any oil, we weren't having any oil and coolant type issues. If we uh, get in here, take a little bit of a gander, everything looks clean. I mean, it's all in really good shape. I have no complaints. Um, should clean up real nice and be just fine. Now, I also suspect that, yes, this is the passage that must feed the filter housing. And then it must, well... Or rather, some of it comes in here, feeds this filter, and then comes out here and goes back up and does whatever it's supposed to do. Uh, there's an oil flow diagram in the manual, but I don't have that out here with me. So getting it out was not bad. What you have are a couple of retaining rings, okay, and some O-rings. Now, the retaining rings come out pretty easy just a little screwdriver get in there just give them a little twist and they start to pop out you can see we might be able to get you in there to see you can see like right here and there there are little indents where you can get in with a screwdriver and just kind of pry those out and they they should come out with no problem the core is only retained by the o-rings and so if you have uh, if you can get those O-rings out and what I did was I just kind of cut them and then just peeled them out all the way around on both ends and the whole core just slid right out. Now going back together, I don't know how good that's going to be, but, um, how do we look down here? We look good. I am very much tempted to reuse this core. It's very heavy. Um, probably a lot of copper in here. Very, very old. It's a good unit. So, all of that is in good shape. The, whatever this was supposed to be, I don't know if it was supposed to be for a sensor, but my understanding was that the drain cock was supposed to be down here. It may have been up here. Not sure, but it's never been on there. That's going to get replaced with a plug. And then I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. It's not really bad, just kind of rough from being cast because this is all cast iron. And then I'll scrape this gasket off. And we'll put the new one on. This is the gasket that came off of the front. And it's in very good shape. But I'm not going to reuse it, of course. It's going to get a new one. So, yeah, popping the core out is not bad. I do not advise hitting it with a hammer. That will not get you anywhere. Uh, just get that old O-ring out and get those retaining rings out. And then the core will come out. And I, I advise doing that very strongly because if this core is in usable condition then you can save it. Uh, and it's really nice to be able to inspect it here. Of course, this copper's not going to corrode when it's covered in oil all the time. I don't know what the inside of these looks like, or these tubes, but what I can tell you is that I could see light through all of them. When I first took this apart, that's one of the little tests that I did, and I could get light to shine through all of them, and, uh, and they're just fine. But since I tried to push this out with a block of wood and a hammer, uh, and, and that didn't work because I thought I could just pop those O-rings free. And I did indent some of these. So I don't know that this core is any good now, but it, it was. So if we come over here to this, this is our new oil cooler, which should be correct. And this is our new gasket kit. All of this came from Ag Kits. And I like Ag Kits a lot. They have... They have a lot of really cool stuff. I bought some gasket material from them for the D4 Cat. And uh, yeah, they've just done really well for me over the years. Let's just let's just get this out here. I've already... Alright, we have our old and new cores. And 
what we're gonna do here, just to double check, because they look like they're exactly the same, but what I have learned is that they can be a little bit different. So hang on, let me extend my tape out here. Length first. Uh, it should be about 12 and 5 eighths. It looks like it's probably like 12 and 11 sixteenths, but that's okay. That's the old one, new one. And I'm not even going to try and get in with the camera and show you. Same thing, about 12 and 11 sixteenths. So our length is good. Length matches up. Now our width here is probably about 4 and 15 sixteenths. maybe four and 31, 30 seconds, but it's four and 15 sixteenths or so approximately. Just shy of five inches if you wanted to be real accurate. So I'll pick that up later. Uh, both of these should, I mean, they're the same dimension, so they sh should work fine. That is just a stain there where that O-ring was sealing. These are the same. This ceiling ring, this top, is actually a little thicker on the Reliance unit compared to the Cummins unit. But the Cummins unit is also heavier than this one. Plus, these dividing rings, these circulating rings, are more robust. They're still sharp, but these are very, very flimsy. I don't think it's going to make that much difference. And then, of course, as you probably noticed, the first difference is that these tubes on the old unit, the Cummins unit, protrude. I don't know what the advantage to this is over a flush surface, a mainly flush surface like this. In my mind, this is just going to hold more crap, you know? But that's, that's just me. If you have any ideas on why they did this, let me know in the comments. I'm sure people would find that interesting. And then, as you probably also notice, this looks more brass colored. There's some discoloration up here. I imagine where they soldered it, it got kind of hot. Uh, I would imagine that this is this has far less copper in it than the Cummins unit. Which, I mean, as long as it's structurally, it's okay. I, I don't really care. It's just generally when they start cutting copper out of stuff, it's to save money and it's it's a cheaper unit. But not everything that's old and heavy is high quality. All right, I, I would much rather that be like not cast iron because it's just so flipping heavy okay it's kind of a pain in the butt to deal with but it is robust so i i shouldn't complain too much but just because it's old and heavy doesn't mean it's good um you know they used to make up for a lack of metallurgy with just more material and that's not always a good thing so this unit should work just fine dimensions are good and all that we have the seal kits we have all of the things, so I'm going to just, I already started wiping this down. I'm just going to wipe it down a little more with some brake clean, mainly on the inside, clean up the ceiling surfaces. You know, there's no old gasket on this side, and there I don't think there's any on this other side. No, I, I think we're all good. This is all cast, so I'll get that kind of cleaned up. We'll scrape the old gasket off of the back plate, get everything put in, and throw it back on the tractor. All right, it's a few days later because the last five times I've tried to film this next little segment, I, it, it does not turn out the way I want, and it's really irritating me, so we're going to try it again. This is take number six. I got the cooling core in, all right, and I ran into a small problem. Now, getting the old core, well, I already talked about getting the old core out. Sorry, it's been a few days. Anyway, putting this in... It was not necessarily difficult. I'm just a little confused right now on, on what the heck is actually going on. And, and this is an example of why this video is observational rather than a an outright instructional one. So here's the problem. This kit is the one that came with the new cooler, okay? And the gaskets and everything in here, I've already pulled the gaskets out and lined them up, and they all seem to line up okay, right? Except for... I don't know what this one goes to, to be honest with you. I am not sure. But anyway, the rest of them lined up okay. And uh, everything was good. I put the bottom ceiling ring in. That'd be the part that goes up against the motor. And I got it in okay. But it was really tight. 
And so I ended up hammering it in. It finally popped in, and I thought, all right, that's what you want. It's supposed to be really tight, because that ring and that O-ring behind it is the only thing that seals the oil that circulates around the outside of the core from the coolant that's circulating through the inside of the core. You don't want to mix your coolant and oil. That's bad. So on this top one, I tried to use the same ring, and uh, or the second ring that came in the original kit, and what ended up happening was it, I mean, I got a little happy with it, and this is not enjoying life at the moment as you can see it's a little just a small tiny bit deformed which is not what you want and so i was forced to open the second gasket kit that i ordered and this ring fell right into place and i mean you can i can still move it just a little bit with my finger there now i don't know which one of these is more correct or maybe both of them are wrong i'm not sure is this going to hold the O-ring in place? Because I use the O-rings from that kit, and, I, and they kind of went in hard. I had to shove them in with a screwdriver, which you're probably not supposed to do. But I was gentle, and the screwdriver was dull, and uh, it'll be fine. But, I mean, the O-ring was tight, and I was like, okay, you want it tight, because, again, that's what's sealing your oil core here, your cooler core. But this ring being a little loose, I mean, it can't come off because the plate is going to be here. This is the back of it. This is the backing plate. It'll hold that in. And then on the other end, it's going to be bolted up to the block, so that's not going to go anywhere. But is it going to back off just enough that that O-ring will creep forward just enough to where stuff will start leaking and mixing? Because no one wants that. I don't know. And this is why I get a little irritated when I order parts and stuff, because, well, first they send me a gasket and three O-rings, and I don't know what the heck they're supposed to go to. And then one kit has uh, retaining rings that go in easy, and the other doesn't. So now I don't know which is right and which isn't. And again, some of you are probably sitting there thinking, well, why didn't you just go to Cummins and get it? Well, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to call them, okay? I don't like to call people. It's annoying. So here we are. It's all in and, uh, and good. I'm going to go out on a limb and say you should not have to hammer these in. Tap? Yes. Hammer? No, probably not. So it's all in now, and we're all good. Now, they did send another gasket in here where is it it's this square one right here the port on the block where this little doodad goes in the back plate and then goes from the back plate on the cooler into the block that little port is a plate that comes off and i'm going to pull that off and, and reseal it so that it's all good uh so i clean this up some I use one of these rust remover discs that Tractor Supply had. That was it actually worked really well. I was impressed. You don't want to scratch the hell out of this, but you want to get it pretty smooth because no one wants to use sealer on it if you don't have to. And uh, this I also got cleaned up pretty good. It goes on, yeah, like so. And then again, this thing here I just use generic O rings from this performance tool kit as you can see i have a big one in there and then i use one of these little ones just to help back it up a little bit because the surfaces are focus the surfaces are kind of pitted and in here if it will get a little light it's a little pitted in there as well and it's hard to clean out super good so this goes in here and then this other end sticks into the block so i got this shined up good o-rings on it that should seal this should seal the plate that the other end of this goes in i'll seal that back up with a new gasket just to be safe and then i'll clean up the other side go mount it on the engine that's uh, i mean it's really there's not much to it all right we've got our surfaces all cleaned up here the plate for this is in the shop i'm gonna get it here in a second this is all shined up a bit uh should be all right now I would like to film this next part so you can see how difficult it's going to be. That way you know. But basically all I'm going to do is take the oil cooler and the gasket that goes on this end. And then I'm going to get a bolt like right here or here or maybe even up here. And I'm just going to thread it in enough that it'll kind of hold it. And it'll just go ahead and rest right there. And then I can get everything else kind of in position. This one I will do last because it sucks to get to. And then this will go on before I bring, excuse me, before I bring the cooler out. So, one thing I do want to note that I'm going to go ahead and do, just because I'm out here and it seems smart to do it, is, well, here's the plate all cleaned up and smooth and shiny. 
the where did it go okay so the gasket that's supposed to go on this end is bent and stuff it's not flat it got a little oopsie in transit now this is a gasket looks like a steel center with gasket material on each side but i'm not going to use that one just because it is warped and stuff, and I don't want to mess with it. So, if I can get in here to the McBee kit. One thing I like about this is that they divided everything up for me. If it will just come out. There. So, this right up here is the gasket that's going to go on the front end. We will use it because it is not... Um, it's not wonky and such. I'm going to keep this one, but I'll see if I can't uh, flatten it back out. And then this is the original that came off the machine, and it's actually in um, pretty good shape. You can tell, really, they're just about identical. But we're going to use the McBee one just because. So, I mean, I've said it once, I'll say it again. I would highly recommend ordering an additional gasket kit. Do not just rely on the kit that came with this. And then, oh, I almost forgot. I took the other retaining ring from the McBee kit and I went ahead and stuck it in here. Because, and it's it's better now, but I was getting some serious uh, protrusion on that old retaining ring. I don't really much like this, but I don't know what else to do about it. So I did not use the PAI retaining rings. I used both the McBee rings, and I also uh, I used the PAI O-rings that went around, but not the retaining rings. Yes, that's right. Okay, I'm sorry I'm repeating myself a bunch. I'm, I'm trying not to confuse myself. So uh, next step, we'll go get this little plate put on. I'm just going to grab some new lock washers. The bolts look fine, and I am just, and I don't know if you have to do this or even if you should do this, but when I'm putting these bolts back in, whenever I can, I'm just putting just a tad bit of clean motor oil on them and putting them back in. That way they don't rust because I noticed that a lot of them were rusting and I would rather not do that. So uh, I'm just giving it a little bit of motor oil when I go back in. I'm not soaking it in or anything, but I don't suppose you have to do that if the threads look good. And if you really want to do spend a little extra money, you could always go get new hardware. It's all standard size hardware. It's nothing weird, nothing metric, not on this engine. So I will get all of this thrown on. I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. Slight change of plans. I was thinking about it, and the cooler housing is not where the threads are. The threads are captured in this piece up on the block. And so I thought to myself, I said, Self, do we really want to lift that heavy-ass oil cooler up here and try and shove in that one piece here in the block and then also balance it and hold it and then try and get a bolt started. And uh, and myself said to me, he was all, no, Owen, don't do that. Come on, be smart about this and uh, give yourself some uh, locating studs to do stuff with. Make it a little easier on you. It's not going to line up 100% perfect, but we've got the gasket in place and the McBee gasket has this like I want to call it plastic wrap that's on it. I feel like it's going to seal a little bit better. So now that we've got our studs in place and the gasket hanging on it, I'm going to go grab the cooler core, throw it on, get everything uh, bolted down. And then I'm also going to put just a small bit of lubricant on the O-rings that are going to go in here, which, oh shoot, I should probably tell you what size O-rings I use. G give me a second, we'll go over that. Okay, O-rings for down here. I used two different, and it just came out of this o-ring assortment that i got it's because it's just sealing antifreeze so if i remember right i think it was this one here okay and then i also grabbed one of these because they were thinner because we're making up two o-rings like that yeah and so what i did then if i can do this one-handed and i can you want it to be a fairly firm fit and the only reason i'm putting that second o-ring on there is to stop this main one from uh, binding up but that seems to be just about right like so you want just a little bit of a lip not much because that's about how the old one was and then we're gonna i can open this one-handed i cannot hang on 
there we go and then we're just going to take a little bit of oil and put on there just so it slides right into place so those two o-rings are hang on sorry this one here and this one here so that's going to be hang on I'm certain I have the numbers printed on the plastic here. I just got to get in the right light to see it. So that's going to be... It's going to be an R16 and a... Hmm. It's going to be an R16. That's the big one. And that is a three-quarter by one and so then the equivalent is going to be another three-quarter by 15 sixteenths so an r16 and an r13 are going to be my best guesses for these and you can pause this and read off those dimensions if you want basically i mean these come in handy just regardless um, i wouldn't use them on transmission fluid applications because they don't work very good there but for sealing out water they should be just fine uh, there's a little bit of oil on it but it's not enough to hurt it i mean we're putting 95 quarts of water back in there to see if she's gonna leak and uh yeah so now now it's ready to go on and this should be significantly easier for me than uh whatever way i was going to try and do it to begin with so i should be able to get this kind of mounted up and get that shoved on worst case scenario i have to take the back plate off and then shove it on separately. But uh, we'll see. So wish me luck. Ta-da! Oil cooler back on with fresh gaskets and O-rings in the important places. And everything tightened up. Got new lock washers on everything. Now, there were a couple of bolts. Like this one here, the original bolt was the threads were chewed up, so I replaced it. Uh, same thing here. Actually, I lost this one. And then I figured out that if you take a comically large extension and you stick it back behind like through right here you can get to that bolt that sits back in there and that makes it a lot easier i mean it's a little tight fit i mean even for like this ratchet which is a little more compact it's a little tight of a fit but it's not bad so we got everything back on here we got our lower coolant tube on and scraped off and everything so it shouldn't leak and nothing should leak now a lot of people might throw fit and i'm going to explain myself here i reuse the old filter here okay i pre-filled it with some oil i had laying around it was probably 1540 it acted like it and the reason i'm using the old filter is because if i got any large chunks in this engine at all for whatever reason of anything i want the old filter to absorb it and then if i verify that everything in here is not leaking then i'll put a new filter on uh, because you know the other reason is that if it is leaking and we get coolant in the oil well the last thing i want to do is ruin a brand new filter and this old one will serve uh, for testing purposes just fine just like running uh, straight water in here just to verify whether or not it's leaking is going to be just fine now i would never send this out to the field to do any kind of work let alone hard work in this condition i would never do that i would insist upon a new filter and and of course good fresh coolant but we're just testing and verifying that the new gaskets are not going to leak and that everything is operating correctly so in the meantime we're just going to use the old filter same thing applies to this up here i have a new one of these when we're done verifying everything works okay i'll pull this off and replace it and then I've got another one of these on standby. It should be here tomorrow or whatever. Uh, one other thing I will say when putting this on, my stud idea did work, but I probably should have left the backing plate off because what happened was this little crossover pipe back here to get, I had to get it in first. And so what I ended up having to do was hold this up with one hand and then get in here and back these three studs off so that I could slide this up into place with this being connected back here so if i had to do this again i will probably leave the backing plate off when i reassemble it otherwise it worked really well and i was able to get stuff in and i didn't have to fight it too bad so all right well good news we found out where the first leak is going to be it's actually leaking everywhere it is leaking right here and it is leaking just as bad back here so 
somebody did something wrong but i think it's just in that crossover tube so what i'm gonna do is probably yeah it's it's leaking actually kind of bad just water this is why we're testing it so what i'm gonna do i think is tighten all these up again and then um Try and tighten up the backing plate, and maybe that will fix the problem. I don't know. We're going to try tightening some stuff and see if we can fix it that way. All right, well, I decided that, because I did some thinking while I was cleaning all this up, and what I decided was, hang on here, i got to stop the plastic from blowing away. This is the McBee gasket, and I want you to make note of how thick that is, okay? And then look at how thin the PAI one is and I will put them next to each other so you can kind of get a decent look here also the McBee one this gasket here appears to be made of a more rubbery material whereas the PAI one is just like a normal gasket material so I don't know that this is going to seal any better but I don't think I'm going to go back in with the original one I don't think it's damaged it's just I think the McB one's going to work better. So I'm getting this all cleaned up. Uh, this crossover pipe I had in backwards. I don't. It doesn't look like it should matter. But I had this end in the backing plate instead of in the block. And this is what was originally in the block. I cleaned up the through passage in there as best I could. I really don't know why it was leaking. My only guess is that I got it in there crooked because I put... The backing plate on and then shove the oil cooler in here and i probably should have put this on first and then put the plate on and if i had to do it again that's probably what i would do because it's way easier and i forgot there was this brace back here that also is kind of a pain to get on with the uh with the backing plate in the way not impossible i mean it's really not bad i've worked on worse but still so we're gonna seal her up with a different gasket and try it again and then i also noticed there was a leak starting here and another one down under here, which I already pointed out. And so I tightened up all these bolts, and they had, you know, another eighth of a turn that they could have gone before they really snugged up. I don't want to crank down on them, but uh, they were a little bit loose. So I'm hoping that now she'll go ahead and seal up. Because if it's not going to seal and sit here dry, not running, then I fire this up and it gets hot, it, it's going to leak everywhere. And it may still, but uh, we're going to find that out here shortly. Hmm, we still have some drippage, but I figured out where the leak was. Okay, so we come under here, that's dry. We come up here, that's dry. Okay, the gasket around through here is dry. That water drop is from earlier, don't worry about it. But we're all dry, except back in here, and guess what? That leak is coming from this side. This is the backing plate which tells me that one of these o-rings is bad because when i swap this tube around this this quit leaking it is bone dry which is good that's what we want so our only drip is right sorry get you back a little bit i don't want to ground myself in the starter hang on that'd be bad so yeah there is our leak so the backing plate will come off again and i will replace those o-rings and put it back on all right change of plans Instead of taking all that apart again, because it's only one drip that I can see, all right, what I'm going to do, oh, I'll probably have to put the cap back on the coolant reservoir, the degas bottle, whatever you want to call it. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this up and we're going to move it down to a flat spot and we're going to see if we can get it up to operating temperature without it making an enormous mess absolutely everywhere, okay? That's what we're going to do. And... The reason we're going to do that is because if this poor old bastard is going to leak everywhere besides that little o-ring then i need to know that because what that means is i'm going to have to order a new gasket kit if i let it come up to operating temperature and then i let it cool down and i pull the dipstick and the crankcase is full of water that means that the cooler is not sealing internally and we have an internal leak and that's also bad which means we'll have to do stuff differently and we need to know that now before uh before I say, yeah, it's okay, we're good to go. Now, it's not as extensive a test as getting it hot and then putting it under load, 
but I think a high idle and getting it up to, you know, at least 140, 50 degrees, maybe a little higher. Sometimes it'll run at 180 and it doesn't hurt it. Um, but if we can get it warm and it's not leaking anywhere and maybe that leak will stop at those O-rings. I don't know. Maybe it'll get worse. I don't know, but I need to know that. And if it's going to leak anywhere else, regardless of how bad that O-ring is, it's going to leak somewhere else. Okay. That's just how it is. So I don't know that this will start. It hasn't started in like two months. Oh my gosh. And I'm gonna move it down to another flat spot. So we'll open the windows, right? And we'll go ahead and shut the door. Now, if we clutch in, oh, she wants to roll a little bit, but it's in. All right, so that should be, yep means that okay we should be out of gear versatile 800 cold start are you ready all right we got oil pressure Why is that moving? That's weird. Huh. Anyway, we're going to go and we're going to see if she's a leaking. I, I didn't want to get like right on top of it. I do value my hearing ever so slightly. Um, all right. So first test is the ground test and the ground is dry. I mean, you can't tell is good because I'm in the way with my shadow but ground test it passes the ground test okay so let's do a gasket inspection on the front yep that's warm up there so we're circulating um gasket down there is not leaking do we have any leakage on this end we do not so let's see if we can get you in there um, it could be that the water was evaporating because the engine was cooking it off, but as part of the reason I didn't get it like super hot because I didn't want, um, I didn't want the engine to be burning off any leaks as fast as they could leak. I wanted, I wanted a good and accurate representation. So we just got her warm 
yeah just just warm there's a lot of cast iron in these old cummins that's uh that's one of the things i love about them it's one of the things i hate about them it sucks to start this in the winter time there's just a lot of iron in these but i don't see any leaks so we will let that sit for a while cool down and we'll see if any new leaks come back go from there and then i mean probably ought to move it forward a little bit and i'm not just saying that because i want to hear this run more without the muffler it is it is loud though i don't know how well you guys were able to tell that on camera but i, I promise you it's it's really loud the feller loses hearing awful quick without that horsepower restrictor on so we'll pull it forward and then we'll just let her sit Come back to it later. Oh my gosh. Now, is she gonna. That better. That will do. She should not roll anywhere. I mean, if it does roll, it's just gonna hit the corral and stuff, which I mean it ain't gonna hurt it that damn bad. So, alright, we will come back to this later and see if it's leaking. So far, so good. All right, well, it's been an hour and a half or so, and the wind's coming up, so this probably is still a little warm, but it should have cooled down enough that we can find out if it's gonna leak. Now, first ground test. Ground is dry. Check our previously known leak spots. Oh, that's an oil leak. That's bad. It's not, it's not horrible, uh, but it's not really good. Now, if we come over here, do we have any leaks? No. If we come back in here, do we have any leaks? No, not that I can see. We're all bone dry here. So we have a small, small oil leak at the very bottom right here. Um, if it doesn't get any worse than that, I can live with it. Uh, I'll tighten that bolt up again and see if maybe that stops it. We seem to be okay there. Now the real test, I don't know, this may have to sit overnight for everything to settle out properly. But if we do that, um, it used a shit ton of oil to fill up the cooling core, but I don't see any water in there, so we're gonna call her good. All right, we're gonna call this a job well done. Uh, now it's possible that we take this out in the field and bag on it at 2000 RPM for a while and it blows the seals out, but until it does that, we're going to say that it's a job well done. Mission accomplished. All right, now, before I let you go, we're going to do a little after action report. But we're going to shut this door. Just a little bit. All right. So here's what I'm going to tell you. First and foremost, use the Interstate McBee kit. Well, first and foremost, order the gasket kit that comes... Uh, separately from the oil cooler ag kits will tell you and i'll have all the part numbers and the links to anything that you can go buy will be down below okay the exact same stuff that i bought it'll all be in the description okay so you order the oil cooler it fits they send gaskets with it don't use those order the gasket kit that they tell you to order separately and use it use this one okay do not use the pai gasket kit because I think that's part of the reason that stuff is leaking. Um, that's the first thing. Second thing, all of this stuff together, that extra gasket kit plus this PAI oil cooler right here from Ag Kits with the tax and shipping, which is Kansas sales tax. Um, all of that together was, I think, about $340. So if you can go to Cummins... And you can get all those parts for $340 or less, I would advise you do that. They're probably going to be a little bit better gaskets. The cooler's probably going to be of a higher quality. Um, but I, I honestly don't know what Cummins wants for this stuff. So there's that. But yeah, do not use the PAI. I know that these ceiling retaining rings were a little bit 
hard to get in. Uh, the McBee ones were more loose. And what kills me is that if you put the old Cummins rings next to these ones, I mean, these are thicker. The PAI ones are thicker, right? But they're the same damn uh, circumference which I don't understand. So I suppose if you were careful and you were able to get these old Cummins ceiling rings out without much problem, you could go ahead and reuse them. And if I had to do this again, that's probably what I would do. But those McBee rings are in there and they seem to be okay. So the only gaskets I used from that PAI kit were the, was that rectangular gasket where that plate went up against the block that the crossover tube went in, and then the O-rings on either end of the cooler core. But otherwise, uh, do not use the PAI kit. Just use the McBee kit. Now the O-rings, again, the O-rings that go on that crossover tube, they do not send in the kit. The Cummins kit might. I don't know. I've never ordered a Cummins kit. But I think, what did I say? An R16, which is a three-quarter ID, you know, and then this is another three-quarter ID. But the outside diameter is a little bit different. And the thickness here is a little bit different. And so I would advise doing what I did. That seems to work okay. Uh, that little leak at the crossover tube may come back. I don't know. But if it does, I know it's the O-rings and not something else. Okay, so that's really all of the part things that I can think to mention. The last thing that I will say before I let you guys go is that some of you might be wondering... And even if you aren't, I'm going to pretend you ask. I'm going to answer the question anyway. You know, why did I leave in all my mistakes? Well, the reason why is because that gives you the information that you need to do this job properly. Okay? A lot of people on the internet, they will make a video doing something and they will they will edit the video to perfection and it makes it look like it was just it went really smoothly. They didn't make any mistakes and they might casually mention that they made a mistake, but to me, the impact of screwing something up doesn't really set in unless it's on video and you put it in the final cut. <clears throat> uh, I, I think the internet's oversaturated with people who edit stuff to perfection and everything looks like it goes so smoothly that then if you go to do that same thing, it goes sideways. But it went sideways for the people in the video too. It's just they edited all that out and pretended like it didn't happen. Uh, not all of them do that, of course, but I feel like there's a good portion that do directly or indirectly. And so then they contribute to an attitude of people getting frustrated that they do stuff and it doesn't go perfectly the way it did in the video. And so they think they're doing it wrong and something's wrong, like out of the ordinary. And well, it's not. That's why I left all my mistakes and stuff in. Um, and so now you can watch this probably 30 minute or better video because that's just about the standard length of stuff on this channel. But you can spend 30 minutes of your time watching this, you know how it comes apart, you know what it's going to look like in there, you know the issues that you could run into, and uh, you have all your part numbers and stuff. And so instead of you having to sit and do all the research to find the parts, and to call Cummins, and then if they want to jerk you around and be like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, and, and then they tell you, well, we don't make that anymore because they don't really want to look that hard, and blah, blah, blah. Instead of having a great big circle jerk and wasting four or five hours of your time doing this, well, now you can watch 30-minute video, have pretty much all the information you need, and do with it what you want. And to me, that is an equivalent exchange. I spend the time, do all the work, I make a video. You watch the video, in return, I get your viewership, and later on when the channel gets big enough, the monetization that comes from the ads, because you're watching the video, so you give me your time, I give you the information, we both win. And to me, that is the best way to go about it. So, this project is completed. If it screws up later, there will be a video on it, I guarantee it, because I don't want, uh, just like with the carpet in the expedition, I messed it up, and I completely forgot to upload the video saying I messed it up until two months later, and so with the Versatile, I'm going to try not to do the same thing. I screwed something up, you'll know about it, because I don't want somebody to go off this video and be like, oh, okay, I know what I'm doing now, and then for me, it messes up later. And you guys don't know about that. I don't want to mislead anyone. So, that is that is it. Appreciate you watching this production. I'm going to get back to other stuff. I think we're going to do a will it start on the International 5000 there. We're going to get stuff cleaned up. It's going to be awesome. So, I hope you'll come back and maybe watch some of that, maybe. If not, if all you're looking for is information on that tractor, well, there you go. You've got it. So, you all take care, and we will catch you in the next one.